Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to be here. I love coming because the people that attend our seminars are just so good. So they're so excited. They love to ask questions, and I hope that we all to get today are going to learn together. If you have a question, just ask me any time during the presentation, and then we have time for questions and answers afterwards. My name is Geraldine Cowhut, and I am the Community Liaison for Cathedral Village, which is located in the northwest section of Philadelphia. Rules are so different, but you are far away, yes. and I'm not going to infringe on your six feet. <laughs> okay, better? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so I am the Community Liaison for Cathedral Village, which means I go around to different places and sites and I provide health and wellness education. So uh, Mary Angelo is wonderful. I think I've been here off and on for about five years, and I just do programs um, dealing with specifics, and I have a list of programs that I share with Mary Angelo, and then she picks the ones that she thinks uh, the folks here would like to hear about. So today I'm going to do a program titled Mindfulness, an Easy Way to Gently Let Go of Stress. Now, mindfulness just didn't happen. It was about 1970, and there was a wonderful PhD captain in the Army. And he saw people coming back and forth from his office and working wherever they were assigned, and they looked like they had stress. They really looked stressed out. And he didn't want to give medication, he thought that wouldn't be good, but let's, let's, he wanted to think of what he could do. So he thought and he thought and he came up with mindfulness. Mindfulness, a way to relax because it's all about the moment. So right now we're all hearing me present a topic on mindfulness and we should all be focused on that word mindfulness because that's what you're here for. But sometimes your mind wanders and wanders. <laughs> or sometimes the person is really boring that you're listening to and it will wander even more. But with this mindfulness and how you do it is so important because you are in the moment. You're not thinking about something that you have to do at one o'clock. You're not thinking about um, a very dear friend who is ill. You're focusing on right now. And focusing on right now gives you something that a lot of people don't have because we all do that. We all have a sense of thinking forward instead of in the moment. Mm -hmm. Mindfulness teaches you how to be in the moment. Now, we can all stray. I mean, I stray all the time <laughs> because I like to, I, you know, I used to do a to do list until I started to really think about mindfulness. A to-do list is really not good for people because they want to do that whole list. And if it's 5 o'clock at night and you haven't done it, well, oh my gosh, I didn't accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. So mindfulness says, we don't want you to feel that way. We want you to be in the moment. So that's what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> so he did sort of get this together. And he also, when he did this, he really felt that the people relaxed more because they weren't worrying or concerned about the tomorrow. We all have to think about those things, but for the day to day, just be present because you'll get probably more done if you're just thinking about this present and you're going to feel good about yourself at the end of the day. So what does mindfulness really do? It's going to, it's going to may, allow you to think about the moment, but also not to worry. That's why this is so good. A lot of people worry about things that never happen. Mm -hmm. So we're just thinking about the moment, and that's what this is all about. Okay. Mindfulness, a new beginning. Mindfulness is a new way of experiencing life. You might not have thought about it before, but mindfulness is going to teach us how to experience life. It improves life balance. 
because you're not concerned about tomorrow. We all have to be. And what I'm talking about is the way you respond to mindfulness. You know, we're all human beings. We're going to think about tomorrow. But right now, we're in the moment. Demonstrates an improved awareness of your surroundings. When you walk, just walk. When you drink, just drink. Sounds a little kooky, but it really does work. Because let's say you want to go for a walk, and you're walking, and it's a beautiful day, you're going to walk around the neighborhood, and then as you're walking, and if you're walking alone, you're going to think about all these different things. Mm -hmm. Erase them. Look at the trees. That's what you're walking. You're walking outside. You're ex experiencing nature. So when you walk, just walk, and when you drink, just drink. Reconnect to simple things in life. We live moment to moment. Rediscover a sense of peace and enjoyment. Take time to smell the flowers. Now you've heard that many times, but it's true. You see a beautiful flower as you're walking. You know, I wonder what that smells like. Take a sniff. No, no, you're not on anybody's property, but take time to smell the flowers. Hearing a bird chirp. Do you ever think about that? A robin can be chirping and you think, wow. I'm connecting, feeling the rainfall. So these are all things that happen every day. Well, not rain, we don't want it to happen every day, but things that you can reconnect with. Increasing gratitude, this is a big one. Through mindfulness, you begin to recognize what we should be thankful for. Guess what, you have time to think. That's what mindfulness is all about. You focus on positive thoughts. We all, have some, we all have negative things in your life, but don't focus on them. They're going to be there anyway. Focus on the positive. Think about childhood memories. Gazing at the sky. Smelling the flowers. Playing outside. What kids play outside anymore? I know my mother would always say, Jerry, go outside to play. Well, we don't say that now. And I remember we lived in, uh, I grew up in Lansdowne, Delaware County. And we had a big old house, and we had a lot of property. We had a corner house, and we had really, I had my best friend in the right next door. But in order for me to get there, I'd have to walk around and walk around to get to her house. So my brother, not unbeknownst to my mother, he dug a, one of our bushes out so I could just easily walk across <laughs> to see Sally. So just, you know, playing outside is just something that you don't hear anymore. And I think kids really miss that. Being in the now. Experience life instead of simply getting through it. Don't just get through your day. Experience your day. Look around you and live longer. Be alert. Awakening your breath. Tune in and be present. So we don't want that, you, we don't want to be so overwhelmed by what we have to do or when we have to do it or who we're going to see. We have to be in the present. And that's what mindfulness does. Making your mind up. Procrastination and distraction avoids the real things, our lives. Mindfulness helps, helps us be present. So after this talk, you're going to think about the things that you've done before or in the past that, well, I should have done it differently only because I had so much on my mind. You gotta remove that from your mind. And that's what this is all about. Our response is wise to the challenge. We can experience each moment as it unfolds. And I think a really big word that I can use is focus. We have to focus. Your lives move and go and you hear different things and you get a telephone call and you hear some not good news and then that sort of starts your day. Yeah. It just is about, you're focusing on the bad news. Well, you have to, you have to experience that bad news, but don't let it bring you down. Focus on something to sort of keep you going in a positive way. Why little things matter. Step out of autopilot and that to-do list. This, per this is perfect for me because I love those to-do lists. But I don't do them anymore after this. 
Experience simple routine tasks. Have you ever thought of when you brush your teeth? My goodness, I put that toothpaste on and I just, it's electric toothpaste, toothbrush, it just goes its way. But you ever think about brushing your teeth? You don't, it just happens. Getting dressed mindfully. We well, probably think of probably an outfit that you wanna wear, or you look outside, it's such a sunny day, it's not hot, it's not cool, it's a perfect day. One to be walking, and what am I gonna to wear today? Listen and talk mindfully. Have you ever talked to somebody, you know, one-to-one, -one, and you are telling that person something, and all of a sudden you could see her mind or his mind drifting. Is that person listening? Well, listening is a skill. So you want to listen. You want to hear what's happening to that other individual. You want to grasp it. Drive mindfully. Now that's very important as we get in our cars. And sometimes you see people driving, you know, and if you're on the expressway, they're, they're dashing and you think, oh my goodness, that person's going to be in an accident. But what happens? Somebody else is in an accident because of this per person not driving mindfully because mm -hmm. they're doing other things. They're on the phone, you know, they're mm -hmm. this and that. You have to drive mindfully. I like this term, simply be. Entering a state of being rather than doing. Remember the to-do list. We, we want to eliminate that. Entering a state of being rather than doing. Release the worry mind. That's a good thing if we can. Release the worry mind. Take each moment as it arises. When we say moment, it could be, we talk about this later, but it could be any little thing that you're doing. Don't just be autopilot. Think about that. And you think, well, I can't do all that in a day. I wouldn't get anything done. That's okay. Your brain is going to be a, is going to be very restful when you do mindfulness because it's not your, you're not jamming everything in your brain. You're just letting it happen. Calmness will move us towards acceptance. A glimpse of joy really matters because they connect us to life rather than split it from us. So joy is good. We want joy in our lives. This one I love, mindful eating. Oh, we have to really look at this. Truly notice what you are eating. Often we overeat because of stress. Mindfulness is trying to alleviate that stress from, from your brain. So, notice what you are eating. Often we overeat because of stress. Often we overeat because of loneliness. Food should be savored by the mind. The sense of aroma, texture, color, and appearance on your plate is mindful eating. Now, when you think about mindful eating, oh my goodness, you go into the refrigerator, you're really hungry. Uh, you haven't had a good breakfast, and now it's like it's 11 o'clock, and your bellies are all grumbling, and you just look in the refrigerator, you don't have anything that you really like, but you eat something mindlessly because you're hungry. You don't want to do that. You want to prepare. You want to think about it. Because sometimes you can gain weight if you're just eating mindlessly. You don't, you forget what you just have eaten, or you don't eat the right food, or you have to go shopping and you don't want to go shopping for good, healthy foods. Everyday mindfulness. Mindfulness is an attitude rather than a skill. So it, the skill is you want to practice mindfulness, but it's the attitude that is going to make you change. Whenever we feel as though we are reconnect to, reconnecting to autopilot, make a choice and start again. Because later on I'm gonna show you a mindfulness practice in a deep breathing. So it, there's no rights or wrongs. We're just talking to, or I'm talking to you about things that you might be able to do to change the way we do our day to day. All of the exercises can be accomplished when needed or on a schedule. So, mindfulness can be scheduled. You could say, I'm going to do this practice. You could do it any time of day or night. Be kind to yourself. You know, we're talking about being kind to people. Think about yourself. Sort of pat yourself on, on the shoulder if you've done something really nice uh, for someone. Remember, you are kind. 
I like this, accepting what is. Life often shoots an arrow at you and wounds you. Mm -hmm. However, by not accepting what has happened, by worrying about it, by saying it is unfair and wondering how long the pain will last, we tend to shoot a second arrow into the open wound and increase, prolong the pain. Pain is a given. Suffering is optional. I love this saying, and this is what mindfulness is all about. It, we're, everybody has issues. I don't think there's anybody in this world that doesn't have an issue, here or there, one or two. But you have to accept that issue and move on. Accept the issue, change it, but just don't stay stagnant because it is going to, um, pain is a given, suffering is optional. We don't want you to suffer. We want you to find it, something that can help in that pain. Mindful breathing, which we will do later. This practice helps deal with stress, anxiety, and negative emotions. Cool yourself down when temper flares and your ability to concentrate. You can sit or stand. Start by breathing in and out slowly. Let go of your thoughts, things you have to do later. Purposely watch your breath. Use daily or when stressed, one to five minutes. Be kind, kind to your wandering eye. So when we do our mindful breathing, we're gonna do a session and it's so much fun because you don't have to have sneakers on, you don't have to have a different outfit on, you just sit down, relax, and breathe. That's what mindfulness is all about. Mindful observation. Choose a natural object from within your environment. This could be a flower, an apple, or a tree. We look outside, some of those uh, trees are just beautiful, especially in the fall. Well, we don't have seasonal change yet, but mm -hmm. just for a tree. Don't do anything but glance at the object. Look at this object as you are seeing it for the first time. Be consumed by its presence. Connect with its energy. So think about an object that you would like to connect with. It could be a tree, it could be because you're outside, it could be because we're seeing trees in the pine cones. It could be something that you treasure at your house. One object, and just look at that object in a way that you haven't looked at that object before. I know we have um, a Waterford crystal ball that we got when we were in London and years and years and years ago and we bought it there and I had to get it on the plane and I was just like a nervous wreck that something was going to happen with it anyway I treasure that because I was so careful with getting that Waterford crystal little vase back home safely that every time I see it number one I think of the trip and secondly how I just nurtured that crystal ball but that's, look at something. It could bring back wonderful memories, good things, good times. So think about that mindful observation. And you sort of look at that, and it does. I think memories are so good. And that's just all, also part of mindfulness. Mindful awareness. This exercise is designed to appreciate simple tasks. Think of a task you do every day. I added making your morning coffee. <clears throat> I am a coffee drinker in the morning, and the first cup is getting me awake a little bit. And not talking yet. My husband already knows this. That second cup is really, I'm ready to go for the day. But you smell the aroma of the coffee. If you're a coffee drinker and you have coffee beans and you grind them, then you put the coffee into the coffee pot top, and then it perks or however you have your coffee. And you smell that aroma. Make yourself aware of that. Next time you have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, think of that aroma. Think of the things that you are doing on a daily basis, every day, and that's one of the things. Uh, you think, are you going to use flavored milk or cream? You think about it, you just open that refrigerator door and you get whichever one you like. Take this moment and appreciate it. How blessed we are to have good food to eat for breakfast, and also you can share. So mindfulness awareness is so, I think exercise is so important. Just little things mean so much. Things that you don't even think about. Exercise. Exercise, mm -hmm. yes. 
Who said exercise? I did. You, okay, right. That is wonderful to do. It really is. Mindful listening. So much of what we feel is influenced by our past experiences. An example, we may dislike a song that reminds you of something negative. And you do. You think of these things. You think of, I always think of Johnny, Math, uh, Johnny Mathis, chances are. So I try, after I did this mindful, what song, why did I dislike that song, chances are? Well, we broke up, but we broke up on Mike because I didn't like him anymore. And I think of chances are, because that was in the, you know, the 60s, and it was something that I really, I love that, I love Johnny Mathis. But it took me mindfulness to understand why I think of that song. Um, so you listen to a new song, you don't think of the person singing, or if you like the song, think of something new. I think with television, with computers, you have access to so many things, new things that you can explore. And just for 15 minutes, explore something new. Think of the dynamics of each musical instrument. Don't think, but hear. Uh, they say that for um, music, music, one of the things that is so good for your brain is jazz. It is really good for your brain. So if you like a, a jazz, a, you know, a saxophone player that you really like, think of that. Not only are you enjoying it because you're listening to it, but that brain also loves jazz, so everything is connected. I like movie score mu music, new, uh, yes. music from movies. Yes. I listen to that a lot. Oh, it is. It's wonderful. Some movies have wonderful music. They, they really do. The musicals are great because they, and there's not too many wonderful musicals I'm, I'm not talking about musicals. I'm talking about movies that have music in the background. Okay. In the background. Okay. The, the background music in the movie. Okay. And you really enjoy that, listening yeah. to that. Mm -hmm. Wow. See, there's, everybody has something, and you like listening to that background music, which is really good. <clears throat> Mindful immersion. Intention of the moment and not the completion of the task. So, do not focus on that to-do list. Experience the task as it is new and you want to explore it. Now I get into, if you are cleaning your house, pay attention to every detail. Well, now, if you have a maid that comes in to clean your house, God bless you. But if you are cleaning your house, pay attention to the detail. Become creative in each task you accomplish. You might even enjoy cleaning. So if you have that, you know, I like to do something like um, every week I do one part of the cleaning episode that I have to do. But whatever you're doing, think about it and create something. Because who likes to clean? But you could think, I'm going to do it this way this week. I'm going to change my routine. Anything that helps you, and it is, don't focus on that to-do list, but experience the task and make it new. So it's hard to make cleaning new, but you can do it, I'm sure. <laughs> Mindful appreciation. Notice five things you have to do every day that go unappreciated. Think of that. I'm sure you could come up with ten things that go unappreciated. You make a list of these things by the end of the day. Then consider the why of these tasks that go unappreciated. These simple tasks support your life, so appreciate them. If you're doing laundry, you know, it's not the best thing in the world to do. You know what to do, you put the laundry in, you separate whites from whites. So most people don't even separate anymore, and that's my showing my age. But anyway, you do those things, and they, it's because you have to do them. So if you have to do them, then think of it and say, well, I'm glad I got that done today. Back to my to-do list. But appreciate those things. It, I guess what, when we talk about mindfulness, just get out of your, your brain and just think of your day to day. That's what mindfulness is all about. Your day to day, your hour to hour. And appreciate that you're alive, that we can all gather here today. Okay, wellness suggestions. Gratitude can keep you happy and healthy. Count your blessings. Keep a weekly gratitude journal. Take a gratitude walk. Why? Because you're happy and you're thankful and you're able to go for a walk around the neighborhood. Write a letter of thanks to someone who helped you and you never gave them enough thanks. I think letter writing is so wonderful. 
It makes you feel really good about writing the letter. It makes you feel good that the person is going to receive the letter. Now, in this day and age, they might receive it in 10 days, but at least you wrote the letter. I think letter writing is so good. And it's part of that expression of, it's all about, it's not all about me, it's about other people. And I, I want to be happy and healthy about it. Make happiness a habit. Spend time with people you care about. Well, that makes sense because probably if you don't care about that person, uh, it may not be that happy visiting. <laughs> a strong link between happiness and longevity. I have handouts for you also. Oh, I was going to ask you, do you have? I do. I'll oh, get okay. them. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of these things are on them, and I'll share them with you. But again, happiness does uh, help you with longevity. Give to others, even spending your time with or lending an ear to a person who needs it. And I think that's so important. If you contact a person that you haven't seen and you're chatting and then you hang up, it was a telephone call, and you really feel probably really good about that because you connected and you had connected for a while. The smell of lavender can bring a smile to your face. How about the smell? The fragrance can affect your state of mind. Now this is research. The true, this is true, 100% of 100% la la lavender oil has research behind it saying feeling anxious lavender may help. Now it has to be the real lavender oil, the 100% and if you go to any store and you get a little bo bottle of lavender oil, you could rub it on your, little, on your hand a little bit, smell it, and it really does, it, it brings a smile to your face. And that's what we want to do. We want to think of ourselves as people that are settled, that are comfortable in their lives, and they have meaning in their life. Now we're going to have a, a, a practice on breathing. We talked about exercise and mindfulness does have a breathing exercise that I'm going to share I want to take five minutes after the five minutes we'll chat and just talk about how you fe felt and I'm sure a lot of you have done breathing exercises but I think one of the things that we can talk about is it's for you and a breathing exercise can be done anywhere, anytime, any outfit on. And you could do it five minutes in the morning, and that's it. Or you can do it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Time it. it you don't have to worry about absolutely anything when you're doing a breathing exercise. You don't have to go to your doctor to make sure that this exercise is going to be not be harmful for you. It's so easy, but it's so good. Because especially if you're having kind of an issue day, you want to sit down, feet on the floor, and you just take a seat. That's all we're going to do. We're not going to do anything else. And we're going to do this for about five minutes. So you sit just like I am. I generally have my hands just, just like you're doing. Because, you know, some people cross, some people do, and I just like to do it this way. Your feet right on the floor, and your back, you have your back forward, so you're almost leaning against the chair. Because you want to take nice, deep breaths. I want to be doing this for about five minutes. Here we go. Breathe in. Exhale. Breathe in. Exhale. Breathe in. Exhale. Now you got it. You can all do it yourselves. And we're going to do this for about five minutes, and then we'll talk about it. You can all start.
Okay, you can open your eyes. Sort of think how you feel. Very relaxed. Relaxed. And remember, you can do this any time and as many times as you want. There's no doctor's written permission to do this. Do it on your own. But I think the important thing is with mindfulness, it just alerts us about ourself, ourselves. Because we live in a very moving world. You turn the television on and sometimes you are sorry you turn the television on. Especially living in Philadelphia, you hear about all these crimes that happen. And you think, what's happening? Or what is happening with people, with kind people? The terrible accident on the, on the subway people watching and you know, I feel sorry for them also because they probably didn't know what to do they were afraid but things have changed in our country so we have to make sure that we care for ourselves and we care for other people because that's all about being mindful being aware being in the moment and that's what mindfulness is all about you know, when I first, you think about the um, doctor who was on the ship and realized he saw people that were under stress. And people didn't, you know, the 60s and 70s, they weren't really thinking about stress and what to do about it or pills to take for stress. It wasn't part of the, what we did. The 50s was a wonderful time. The war was over. People started buying houses. They had lots of kids. Mm -hmm. Things were great. Then the 60s came and all of the issues with that. Then in the 70s, people were still concerned and he saw these people coming, the you know, sergeants, generals, whatever. They were under stress and he, so he thought about this mindfulness and it helped and he saw how much it helped and he taught the people how to do it. And the people said, I feel so happy because yes, I am under stress and just taking this five minutes made me feel a little bit better about myself. And I could then think about maybe other people, but I was so concerned about the things that I had to do, or also things that I wanted to do. So it just takes time for you to think in that moment. Because when you do, it's not doing anything other than you thinking about, you know, having that cup of coffee in the morning, or making a a telephone call. Think about that telephone call that you're going to make because somebody is going through a hard time. Think about that. Then after you talk and you hang up, then you think, that made me feel good. And that's what we want to do. I think if more people felt good about themselves and had this opportunity to take time, to take a breath, they probably, some of these things may not happen. I mean, I know I live in another world thinking that, you know, just a little breathing exercise is going to help, but if it just helps a few people, isn't that good? So that's what mindfulness is all about. And again, thinking how long we've been doing it, and it is very popular now. You just go online, put in mindfulness, and let me tell you, you could write my speech because it's <laughs> everywhere. And people are doing it because they are under stress, and they realize that I don't want a pill. Yes, I'm under stress, but I don't want a pill. Mm -hmm. What I want is to relieve some of this stress. Mm -hmm. And so this is one way of doing it. And they, we also have mindfulness that you can basically, you start at the head and you try to think, okay, in my head, I'm thinking of the top of my head. And then, well, then my ears, my eyes, my lips, my neck. You go through parts of your body. And that's another way, you know, you're not talking about it, but that's another way of doing a mindfulness exercise. You're not just deep breathing, you're thinking of the top of your head. And it's almost like there's a shower and you're in the shower and the water comes down and it bathes every part of your body. It's basically the same thing. You think of the parts of your body as you're just doing like a mindfulness break. And when you do it, you know, that's another way of doing it. You don't even have to do the breath. Just sit just like you were doing, your hands here, and you think about the top of your head, 
your eyes, your ears, your nose, just thinking about it gives you another mindful episode. But again, if you want any information, it, I have the handouts, and they were the basic ones about the lavender, about having the, uh, uh, the breathing exercise, and sleeping. So the, the three were there. And um, so if you have any questions about the presentation, yeah, or about good. mindfulness, or, yes? I found a question, uh, you were saying about you're doing it for older people. You were saying older people, <laughs> but um, I was a school teacher, and the kids used to come back from lunch. One year, I had a really robust group, and they would come back from lunch, and they would be all over the place and up and down and everything. And one day, I guess I was upset. I wasn't upset. I was just aggravated, and I just told everybody, "Put everything away. Put your feet flat on the floor. Put your hands flat on the desk." And I said. Breathe in, one, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Breathe out, two, three, four. I did that for a while, and then I said, with their eyes closed. And I said, now picture your favorite place and keep breathing. You know, we did it. I said, now put yourself in your favorite place. And we did, you know, a little bit. And then I said, now leave your favorite place. Now close your eyes, open your eyes. I didn't know anything about mindfulness, and I just <laughs> reminded them the whole time, breathing and everything. But after a time, you know, I just sort of, they came in, they were satisfied, good about it, and I stopped doing it. And this, you figure, are sixth graders, you know, they the seventh graders. Hey, wait, why are we doing this? They come in for lunch. Are we going to breathe? Are we going to breathe? And it amazed me that they were so, I was doing it for me, for my yeah. peace of mind. I was so quiet, really. But they realized that they were calm and felt yeah. better about it. And that was, you know, I wasn't, mindfulness wasn't even something to do. Yeah. But it was something that I realized from them that I started doing for myself. That is great. Yes. Oh, thanks for sharing. Dax, so I can piggyback on that. Yours were old, but mine were prepaid kids. And oh. the same kind of thing they needed, and I think what you just said about people getting it, if we could start something like that in mm -hmm. school or somewhere to do something like that. Mine also used to be, with the little ones, a candle, you say focus on something, and the lights were out, the same kind of thing, and being mm -hmm. able to get them mm -hmm. centered. But the, the double whammy, doing it for yourself, but you're doing it for somebody else, that's what I always see in the phone calls and the notes. Yeah. It's a double thing. It's the double back yeah. on it in terms of that you're helping others, but I get as much out mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. as vice versa as mm -hmm. they do. But I mean, from little ones, mm -hmm. the same thing with yours, that yeah. whole feeling of connectedness. Yeah. And then for them to carry it on, who knows, hopefully go home mm -hmm. or a neighborhood and somewhere else yeah. it can be. So what is that? But well, one seed you plant, you don't know where it's a teacher affects eternity because you don't know where it's going to be. Right. Yeah, right. definitely. Good comments. It really is. It doesn't I mean you did it like you said, just you you needed peace in your classroom and you thought of that. But that breathing exercise is so good. Mm -hmm. And I like it because I like mindfulness because it doesn't take anything to do. It doesn't take rocket science to understand it. It doesn't take any time to buy an outfit and go to the gym. It's just simple, simple things that you can do. You're doing it for yourself, but you're doing it for the people around you also. And when you're making that phone call or letter writing, and I think I think letter writing, well, it's a thing of the past, especially with the post office and the amount of, you know, that you have to pay for postage. But I think that I have, note paper and I will send sometimes a note to somebody who's not feeling well or something. And I'll say like three sentences, nothing, nothing major. Uh, years ago you used to write these big letters because you didn't have any way of connecting. Now we have the internet and text messaging. But just a little note saying, hi, how are you doing? I heard something about. And put it in the mailbox. Little things that I really feel good when I do that. And I don't know if the receiver does, but I just know that I, that's what I do. And it makes me feel better. And it's all about, mindfulness is all about us. We have to be, we have to control how we actually respond. And the way you, you control it is by thinking about ourselves. Be a little selfish is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Think about us. And the way you do that, just a little exercise like this. Mm -hmm. And then you could just do anything you want to do. And that's, again, what I like. Just sit down, breathe, that's it. 
Some people do it three times a day. You, well, you could do it as many times as you want before you have, before I have that coffee. I don't think I'd even make it. I have to have that coffee to be able to breathe. My husband's so funny when I say that. But anyway, mm -hmm. any questions or comments? There are gratitude journals. Mm -hmm. There are gratitude journals. Yes. And we also Mr. do Blessings. breathing and uh, yoga. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You see, that's so connected. Mm -hmm. Yoga is a wonderful thing because, again, it's about you. And it gives you time and solace to be able to do yoga mm -hmm. and then realize that you've gone through this wonderful exercise and you're at peace. And they always do the, the introduction and the ending with yoga. It's really, so you do yoga also? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. See, coming here is so good because you guys do everything. <laughs> but the same thing you talked about, the head thing with the yoga, they start with that yeah. taking mm -hmm. part of the, the body and really focusing on it. It is. As soon as you say yeah. that, I connected with your yoga. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions or comments? Um, also, well, I do it in the morning now. I don't have a gratitude journal anymore, but I write down... Uh, something I was thankful for for yesterday. Of course, yeah. I do it first thing in the morning, so it's nothing for the, but I, I do it for the day before. And sometimes it's just saying, thank you for the sun. I mean, it doesn't yeah. have to be anything major. In the beginning, I thought it had to be something major, you know, big time. But then I realized, I'm thankful for the fact that I hear, like you said, the chirping of the birds. Yeah. And I realized, they had to have been chirping around my neighborhood <laughs> all the time, but before I was working and trying to, you know, do but now, you know, thank you for the birds. Thank you, you know, just first thing in the morning, and that kind of puts me in a positive frame of mind. That's what I'm saying. These little things that you do help you, and it helps other people around you because you sort of emulate that. If you're happy inside, it's going to show. Mm -hmm. And this past week, the moon has been beautiful. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Take time. It has yeah. been. And what drew me to that was when I got up to use the restroom. In the middle of the night, I thought I left the light on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's so, that, that is funny. That's yeah. making the most of something that's not pleasant. For that's right. Up in the middle of the night, <laughs> this age group is not fun, but yes. look at it. Yeah. We can all appreciate yeah. that. Yes. yes, indeed. Um, my sisters say that I bring them down because I'm so negative and worry all the time because I'm such a bad worrier that they won't tell me things that happen like my my stepbrother's wife passed away in February and I didn't find out about it for September because my sister thought it would scare me because she's she's in the age group I am uh -huh. and she died suddenly and she and they know that stressful things make me go off the handle yeah. and they, 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 they're always saying, oh, Bonnie, you're such a worrier. You're such a worrier. Stop worrying. <laughs> well, there are what we used to call the worry warts, right? Yeah. They were a worry uh -huh. wart. And people that do worry, I mean, I had a sister who worried not only for herself, mm -hmm. and she worried for everybody. And she was a wonderful person, but she was really worried. And we, we would go to the shore, we went to Seattle City, we had a house there, and she was the one, and every, we had a big family, so everybody, the kids, were all in the water. Well, my sister was at that water's edge watching them, calling them in. She could not swim. But that was the funny part. You know, as you got older, you realized that Norma couldn't swim. But it was just, she was in control, though. She made sure that those kids only got up to their knees. So anyway. And yeah. my, my so, grandmother was a terrible worrier. Yeah. So I think I inherited it. I think you do. You do. I think there are people that do inherit because I, I remember I, we had an aunt mm -hmm. that was a worry ward. You know, so, mm -hmm. so the aunt was a worry ward, my sister was a worry ward, mm -hmm. and the other, we didn't get it, my other mm -hmm. sister and brother. We didn't yeah, get it. Yeah, the people that don't worry are so lucky <laughs> because they don't get stressed out. No, they don't. They can so maybe, so maybe mindfulness exercise will help you. It will. It will. So and what you told me today made me feel better already just from what you said. Okay, good. I'm, yeah. I'm happy. I will be back in uh, 2022. But thank you all for coming. This was so nice. I appreciate your attendance. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, yes.
Thank you, Regin. Your talk helped me. Good. Just the things you told us to do, like counting my blessings is something I try to do. Yeah, that's good. And that helps.